Well, good afternoon, folks, and welcome to the Philos Meal. I hope you're all seated comfortably. We have another interesting program for you today. Chris White's going to start us off, and then we're going to have our quiz. And then our special guest today is Steph McLeod, who has a great story to tell. The next event is going to be on the 24th of June, and that will probably be our last online Philos. We'll be doing it the same way as we're doing today. And our theme is going to be Women of Courage. And we have some very interesting ladies that are going to share your story with us on the 24th of June. So remember and put that in your diary. And that will be our last one before the summer. Hello, my friends. Chris here, sending all my loving to you. Here we go. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you.
Hi everyone, it's Abby the Quizmaster here. I just want to start by saying a quick thank you to you all for tuning in every month and taking part in playing along with the quiz. I really do appreciate it and I hope you enjoy yourselves too. And welcome to this month's Virtual Philos Quiz. Um, last month the score to beat was 16 out of 20 and I have actually only heard from one person I think who has been able to do that. Um, so I'd like to say a quick shout out and a huge congratulations to Jack Campbell. So well done to you, Jack. This month the score to beat is 15 out of 20. So please do let me know if you do score more than 15. Um, if you do text your name and your score to 0797567 I'd love to hear from you. And if you've got any feedback, you can also let me know as well. So this month, as usual, we've got a two round quiz consists of 10 questions per round. Uh, so we'll just dive straight in and we'll go round one, question one. So question one, is what is the name for a thin slice of bacon? What is the name for a thin slice of bacon? Question two is which part of Berlin was enclosed by the wall? Was it A the north, B the east or C the west? Which part of Berlin was enclosed by the wall? A the north, B the east, or C the west? Question three is how many carats is in pure gold? How many carats is in pure gold? Question four is in which country would you find the Great Pyramid of Giza? Which country would you find the Great Pyramid of Giza? Question five is who played Forrest in the film Forrest Gump? Who played Forrest in the film Forrest Gump? Question six is what type of alcohol is Russia famous for? What type of alcohol is Russia famous for? Question seven is how many wheels does a unicycle have? How many wheels does a unicycle have? Question eight is which children's TV show was set in Pontypandy? Which children's TV show was set in Pontypandy? Question nine is what type of tree does an acorn grow into? What type of tree does an acorn grow into? And question 10 is in Australia, what is the state capital of Victoria? In Australia, what is the state capital of Victoria? So we'll go through the answers for round one now um, and we'll go back to question one, which was what is the name for a thin slice of bacon? And the correct answer is a rasher. So a thin slice of bacon is called a rasher. Question two was which part of Berlin was enclosed by the wall? A the north, B the east or C the west? And the correct answer is C the west. So it was the west of Berlin which was enclosed by the wall. In question three was how many carats are there in pure gold? 
And the correct answer is 24. So there are 24 carats in pure gold. Question four was, in which country would you find the Great Pyramid of Giza? And the correct answer is Egypt. So you would find the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. Question five was, who played Forrest in the film Forrest Gump? And the correct answer is Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks played Forrest in the film Forrest Gump. Question six was, what type of alcohol is Russia famous for? And the correct answer is vodka. Russia is famous for vodka. Question seven was, how many wheels does a unicycle have? And the correct answer is one. So a unicycle only has one wheel. Question eight was, which children's TV show was set in Ponty Pandy? And the correct answer is Fireman Sam. So the children's TV show Fireman Sam was set in Ponty Pandy. Question nine was what type of tree does an acorn grow into? And the correct answer is an oak tree. So an acorn will grow into an oak tree. And the final question for round one was question 10. In Australia, what is the state capital of Victoria? And the correct answer is Melbourne. In Australia, the state capital of Victoria is Melbourne. Now we move on to round two and we start with question 11, which is which element has the chemical symbol Na? Which element has the chemical symbol Na? Question 12 is in what year did Netflix first start online streaming services? A, 2007. B, 2008, or C, 2009? In what year did Netflix first start online streaming services? A, 2007, B, 2008, or C, 2009? Question 13 is what colour is the cloth on a traditional snooker table. What colour is the cloth on a traditional snooker table? Question 14. Is quaver and crochet are both types of what? Quaver and crochet are both types of what? Question 15 is what Middle Eastern country used to be called Persia? Which Middle Eastern country used to be called Persia? Question 16 is the Scottish band The Snuts are from which area of Scotland? A. West Lothian, B. Glasgow, or C. Renfrewshire? The Scottish band The Snuts are from which area of Scotland? A. West Lothian, B. Glasgow, or C. Renfrewshire? Question 17 is, does an epilogue come at the beginning or the end of a play? 
Does an epilogue come at the beginning or the end of a play? Question 18. Is the first episode of which popular gardening TV show aired on the 14th of April 1978? The first episode of which popular gardening TV show aired on the 14th of April 1978? Question 19 is how many stripes are there on the American flag? A, 13, B, 15, or C, 17? How many stripes are there on the American flag? A, 13, B, 15, or C, 17? And our final question is question 20. Which is which type of animal is a kingfisher? What type of animal is a kingfisher? So we'll go through the answers now then for round two, which we'll move back to question 11, which was which element has a chemical symbol Na? And the correct answer is sodium. So sodium has a chemical symbol Na. Question 12 was, in which year did Netflix first start online streaming services? A, 2007, B, 2008, or C, 2009? And the correct answer is A, 2007. So Netflix first started online streaming services in 2007. Question 13 was which colour is the cloth on a traditional snooker table? And the correct answer is green. So the cloth on a traditional snooker table is green. Question 14 was quaver and crochet are both types of what? And they are both types of musical notes. So a quaver and a crochet are both types of musical notes. Question 15 was which Middle Eastern country used to be called Persia? And the correct answer is Iran. So Iran used to be called Persia. Question 16. Was the Scottish band The Snuts are from which area of Scotland? A. West Lothian, B. Glasgow or C. Renfrewshire? And the correct answer is A. West Lothian. So the Scottish band The Snuts are from West Lothian. Question 17 was, does an epilogue come at the beginning or the end of a play? And the answer is the end. So an epilogue happens at the end of a play. Question 18 was, the first episode of which popular gardening TV show aired on the 14th of April 1978? And the correct answer is the Beech Grove Garden. So the Beech Grove Garden first aired on the 14th of April 1978. Question 19 was how many stripes are there on the American flag? A 13, B 15 or C 17? And the correct answer is A 13. There are 13 stripes on the American flag. And our final question was question 20, which was what type of animal is a kingfisher? 
And the correct answer is bird. So that's us gone through all the questions for this month's quiz. Remember, please text me if you do score more than 15. And next up in the programme, we have our special guest for this evening, who is Steph McLeod. And Steph is a Scottish Christian singer-songwriter. You may have heard Steph's music before on BBC Radio 2 or on Songs of Praise. And he has a large following on his YouTube channel and he's currently number one in the UK Christian chart. So Steph is going to sing a couple of songs for us, which is up next. And then he will share his story with us, um, which is including his experience of homelessness and serious addiction issues, which he faced before coming to faith. So I hope you do find Steph really interesting and you'll enjoy his music too. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. But the blood of Jesus For my part in this I see Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing this my plea Nothing but the blood Nothing but the blood of Jesus Not of good that I have done Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow That makes me white as snow The blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow That makes me white as snow No other fount I know Nothing but the blood of Jesus Nothing but the blood of Jesus Nothing but the blood of Jesus God sent his son They called him Jesus He came to love 
heal and forgive He bled and died To buy my pardon An empty grave is there To prove my Savior lived Because he lived I can face tomorrow Because he lives All fear is gone Because I know He holds the future Life is worth the living Just because he lives Oh yes he lives And then one day I'll cross the river I'll fight life's final War with pain And then as death Makes way to victory I'll see the light of glory And I'll know He lives Yes, He lives because He lives I can face tomorrow Because He lives All fear is gone Because I know He holds the future I'll see the light of glory And I'll know He lives because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds a future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. Amen. Well, Steph, we really enjoyed uh, the songs that you sang for us there, and we're so pleased that you were able to join us for this fearless meal. At the interview, we'd just like to hear a wee bit about people's personal story. And, and the place we normally start is just ask them to say a wee bit about their childhood and what that was like for you. Well, thanks for having me on. It's a privilege. And thank you very much. It's lovely to see you. And uh, my childhood was lovely, actually. It was, I wouldn't say it was anything spectacular, but I loved it. I grew up in Musselburgh. Uh, just seven miles shy of Edinburgh, uh, a wee fishing town, and uh, only child, mum and dad worked every hour God gave them, and uh, I spent quite a bit of time at my granny's, and she had lots of kids, so it was a bit like the Bruins, you know, lots of uncles and aunties and cousins kicking about, I remember uh, stealing rhubarb out the, gra out the garden, and then uh, sneaking into the kitchen to uh, dab it in the sugar, you know, and, and, and paying the price for it, you know what I mean? So, like, uh, army family, and uh, just long walks down the esk with my pals, playing soldiers in the in the woods and stuff like that. I was quite high maintenance outside of that, but um, I found music at a young age, and that really helped me to focus uh, a lot of my energy. And I just loved it, man, you know? So, I, I grew up in that kind of setting, and very sort of working class, um, family orientated 
Uh, nothing spectacular, but I've got fond memories. Now, um, I, I noticed that um, Celtic Music, you had sang in Christ Alone, and there was like 4.7 million views on it, mm -hmm. which was really, really spectacular. And you've got, you know, a big following um, on YouTube. And, and you know, you're obviously, you know, a, a, a Christian artist that people recognize and appreciate. But I understand that things weren't always like this. I wonder mm -hmm. if you could tell us sort of what we you had a you had a natural, normal, good childhood, and now you're doing this amazing stuff. But in between wasn't great. Could you tell us a wee bit about the low in your life and how you got to that low, and then how you got out of that low? Sure. I mean, it's it was a a bit of a journey. There was my parents split when I was fifteen, which was. A difficult time. I didn't understand how to deal with that emotionally. We'd, I grew up in an environment where you just didn't talk about how you were feeling. You know, I, I think I don't know if that's just a Scottish cultural thing or. But um, I found my release and partying with my friends. But unfortunately, I progressed to the point, and it was a, a ten-year progression to where um, my life just became completely unmanageable. University was a disaster, and I ended up homeless at the age of 24 and living on the streets and begging in order to feed my addiction and wrapped in amongst all of that over the 10 years there was various traumas that um, I was either victim to or experienced and uh, I just I, I used alcohol and drugs in order to anaesthetize my symptoms of that um, it was I was on and off the streets for about a year which was just a horrible existence man you know it's very it's a full-time job, 24-7, no breaks, no pay, but it'll cost you everything. And sleeping out in the cold is one of the worst things I've ever experienced. And I knew um, after the winter of 2005, I was either going to die or I needed help. And I reached out to some people and connected with the Bethany Christian Trust, who are a wonderful organisation. And they offered me a, a bed in their... Um, center in Leith where they also do a recovery program which is very Jesus focused and Christ centered which I didn't really know much about but I was just glad to be somewhere safe dry and I was able to sober up and, and start eating food again and um, you know I started doing the program and uh, my life started to change from that point you know and looking back on that what would you say was kind of the pivotal thing that, you know, sometimes you get to a, a, a kind of defining moment, you know? What would you say was the defining moment in that experience? Listening to a, a man's testimony was my defining moment for um, the, the big change in my life. I, it was the evening that I gave my, my life and heart and soul to Jesus, uh, which belonged to him anyway, but you know, I, I invited him into my, my heart and my life as my Lord and Saviour. And it was I listened to a chap called Cammy McKenzie, who's a wonderful man, an absolute uh, soldier for Christ, heavily involved in prison ministry. And I went I went for the five course dinner, which I'd never had before, you know, growing up in Musselburgh, you got three courses if it was Christmas or Easter, you know, which was your jelly and ice cream and that. But um, I was very interested in the five course dinner, but um, the Kami gave his testimony and I related a lot to it. I thought this church minister was going to tell me stuff that I just couldn't be bothered with. But when he spoke about Jesus, everything changed for me. And he said, God gave him the strength to break the chains that were killing him and the courage to walk away from that life reborn, full of hope. And then... He said, there's no such thing as 50% free, it's all or nothing. So if you want to be free in Jesus, you've got to give him everything. And I'm sitting there going, I want this. And I gave my life to Christ that day. And I just, I remember praying with Kami and saying, you know, God, if, you're, if, you're, if you can hear me, I am so sorry for this existence. Uh, I, I don't know what's happening, but if a new life means following you, then then I'm in all the way. And I felt something move in my heart, which I'd never felt before. It's difficult to describe, but I know now it was the Holy Spirit coming into my life. And I did something very unscottish. I cried. 
in front of other people and I went from a man who thought he was the centre of the universe which is the nature of addiction to suddenly looking out and realising that I wasn't alone anymore and I went back to the hostel that night with something in my life that I'd never had it was gratitude for having nothing and then the next morning I woke up and the first thing I noticed was people smiling at me for the first time in my adult life they probably had done but I just can't remember it you know and I started to see the world in a whole new way and it was like Jesus saying I've got so much I want to share with you just come with me and that's it that was my defining moment that's amazing now just tell us a wee bit about what's happened to you since that um and uh, you know how did you pick up your we always were interested in music but how did you develop this gift that you have for songwriting and for sharing music I was a classical musician from a young age. I studied at the City of Edinburgh Music School and then the RSAMD. But addiction overtook my life. But I started writing songs in the homeless hostel and these really banged up guitars that were worth 50p. They really were. <laughs> but um, I started writing about being homeless and being an alcoholic. But it was just, f I'd never sang before, you know. Um, it was my way of processing stuff and coming to terms with it. A few years later, I got involved in writing Christian music through taking part with the Origin Scotland Music Ministry and with the help of a, a charity got to record an album and then somebody said to me you've got a, a ministry you know your ministry is to share the gospel through your testimony and through your songs and you know what I've never looked back and it's just been a snowball that's gradually just started to to to, to move forward and build and there's been ups and downs I had some uh, stuff I had to look at uh, about five years ago uh, which was to do with mental health and stuff that had happened when I was homeless and and and, and I had the wonderful help with my of our wonderful NHS and uh, a lovely Christian therapist that um, is a good friend and I was able to look at that and that really helped me to enrich my relationship with Jesus uh, once I was able to let go and process that stuff and Recently I've been involved with a wonderful ministry called Celtic Worship doing old hymns like In Christ Alone and uh, some of the old favourites like uh, uh, How Deep the Father's Love, uh, sorry Amazing Grace, How Deep the Father's Love and How Great Thou Art and stuff like that. Uh, I've also signed with um, a music worship label called Integrity Music and released some stuff with, with them and we've got plans for the future so it's just such a wonderful privilege to be a part of this music sound that's coming out of Scotland just now because even though I'm doing my thing there's loads of us and there's a wonderful worship community and it's just such an honour to be a part of that. So the, the, the kind of issues that you had with mental health just that few years back, is there anything that you could share with that just because there's just so many people these days and, and sometimes as Christians we we, we have a, an, an old-fashioned view was that you know Oh, if you've got a problem with mental health or something not right with you spiritually, and we know that that's just not the case, and that many Christians carry that have got to deal with that mental health problems, you know. And no doubt there's probably somebody listening even today that's 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 been through a mental health experience, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, just you know, what advice would you give to people, and and encouragement would you give to them? The first words that were said to me were, it's okay not to feel okay, you know, there are actually reasons for these negative emotions, they teach us stuff, you know, uh, if you feel like you can't get through something, that's alright, you can get through it with help and finding someone that you can trust, that won't be overwhelmed by what you've got to share with them, that is trustworthy and that will listen, um, that saved my bacon in ways I can't even begin to describe man you know so I, I got a really good Christian therapist although it's not whether they're Christian or a therapist or a good, it's about whether or not they're a good therapist you know so finding somebody that, that, that can benefit you in that way and uh, as my friend told me once you know we're only as sick as our secrets the truth really will set you free everything that I've learned always points back to the gospels and the scriptures and uh, even though I didn't feel like it Christ was walking through everything with me and the hardest relationship I've ever had to develop was the one with, my, with, with myself because I knew God, I know God loves me 
and I know he forgave me for all the things that happened, he did it on the cross, but I hated myself so much, so there was a conflict there. So in talking and processing and dealing with all these things and learning new habits and growing in that way, especially serving in the church and within my community, I was able to start seeing myself in a way that God sees me, um, or at least begin to see little bits of that. And you know what? I don't think of myself so much that way anymore and I actually smile at myself in the mirror. And it, again, it just enriched my relationship with Jesus. So find somebody you can talk to and trust. It's okay not to be okay and you can get through this with the right help. Thanks for that. Now, we've had this, you know, over a year now of COVID and I know you're, you're, you're married and you've got kids and just, just to how have you kind of coped with that? What difference has it made and what opportunities has it presented you with? How did we cope with it? That's a, a I have no idea how we managed to cope with it. it. It affected everybody in different ways. We saw it in our kids. I, I guess looking back on it now, because I'm, I think we're coming into a new season now. I didn't realise how much it actually affected me mentally. You know, because I, I, I wasn't able to connect with my recovery community the way that I did, or serve and volunteer the way that I did, which and go to the gym, which is part of my well-being routine. You know, um, so I, I found myself self-medicating with chocolate a lot you know which wasn't great and um stressing out about all the uncertainty and getting wrapped up in a lot of old feelings and emotions which were so far from how i was doing on my spiritual walk um but my wife is a rock she's carried me through it i've got wonderful brothers and sisters that have kept in touch we've done church online i've also managed to write and record stuff which has kept me focused and busy and you know what? We've survived. We've got through it. We got through a couple of bereavements and uh, my son had an accident, which we, we were really grateful he's all right. And um, so God's been faithful and with us through the whole thing. It's taught me that um, I don't need to be on the road as much anymore. And I, 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 I cause I always said that I'd, I'd love to spend more time at home. Uh, cause being a traveling musician, it's one thing, uh, you sacrifice stuff, you know what I mean? Um, so I don't think it will ever go back to the way that it was. So I've, I, the adjustment has been the hardest part for me. But I've found something that works now doing stuff like this. Uh, but also um, being more picky and choosy about what I do so that I can invest more time into my family. And you know what? I'm loving that. I'm absolutely loving this reset, which is a word that's been used a lot. So I'm looking at the gold that's coming out of the, 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 the dark season because even through the valley we can see the stars shining above us, you know, and uh, I'm really grateful for that. Steph, it's been a real privilege to speak to you and thank you for sharing with us and being so honest. Thank you now. Well, thank you very much. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed our programme today again. Remarkable story from Steph McLeod about how God touched him at the very point of his need and restored his life to him. And maybe you're listening tonight and there's challenges in your life. And I would just encourage you to come to Jesus and share your problems with him because he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life and he wants to do good things for you. So if you'd like to follow up on that, then why don't you speak to someone that maybe invited you along to the fellows meal. That would be a great idea for you to do. Now we're going to finish off, and we're going to finish off with a song called In Christ Alone, and it's brought to us by Celtic Worship, and Steph McLeod is the soloist in this song. 4.7 million people have viewed this already. I hope you'll enjoy this as a benedictory song, and God bless you.
his fan. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. of Christ I live There in the ground His body lay Light of the world by darkness slain Then bursting forth in glorious day Up from the ground Yeah.